Hello everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. As always, I am your host, Zero Eddie. Let's go and get into it with the first animal of our week, which is the Goliath Frog, otherwise known as the Goliath Bullfrog or the Giant Slippery Frog, is a large frog named Cameroon Equatorial Guinea in Africa. Here they can be found in and around fast-flowing sandy bottom rivers and waterfalls feeding on a variety of prey items such as crustaceans, fish, small mammals, small reptiles, other amphibians, worms, spiders, and insects. As tadpoles, they are strictly herbivorous, and they feed only on a singular aquatic plant, Dicrea warmanigi. Goliath frogs themselves are preyed upon by snakes, crocodiles, Nile monitors, and humans. At over 1 feet in length and 7 pounds in weight, the Goliath frog is the largest extant frog species. However, Goliath frog eggs and tadpoles are about the same size as other frogs, despite their very large adult form. And like most amphibians, water is vital for their reproduction. Because the Goliath frog lacks a vocal sac, it cannot produce mating calls, which is a behavior generally present in most frogs and toads. Instead, males will attract mates by digging a nursery pool roughly three feet wide and four inches deep, sometimes moving quite large stones and logs out of the way in the process. During mating, the female will lay several hundred to a few thousand eggs and attaching them to several aquatic plants. This nest building may partially explain the Goliath frog's large size, as larger frogs may be more successful at moving heavy objects when constructing their nests. Adults have also been shown to guard their nests at night. With the larval development taking between 85 and 95 days, adults are known to live upwards of 20 years. Goliath frogs are an endangered species, which, in fact, which face several ongoing threats, such as habitat loss and extensive hunting for their meat. Next up is the large tooth sawfish, also known as the wide sawfish, the freshwater sawfish, the common sawfish, leech heart sawfish, and the river sawfish. It is a species of sawfish in the family Prestididae. Historically, they can be found throughout the Atlantic. They can be found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, from as far north as the Mediterranean Sea to as far south as the Horn of Africa. It can also be found throughout rivers and lakes of Africa, North, South, Central America, Southeast Asia, and Northern Australia. However, due to massive population decline, it is now missing from much of its former range. Reaching over 20 feet in length and weights of excess of 1,300 pounds, the large tooth sawfish is the third largest sawfish species after the green sawfish and the small tooth sawfish. And they can be distinguished from the relatives by their unique dorsal fin, which is positioned in front of its pelvic fins, Unlike in all other sawfish species, where the leading edge of the dorsal fin is often behind the leading edge of the pelvic fins. The large tooth sawfish is a predator that feeds on fish, mollusks, and crustaceans by using its rostrum to roast stirrup the bottom to find prey and to slash at schools of fish. Sawfish themselves are often eaten by crocodiles and large sharks. The rostrum itself typically makes up around 27% of the sawfish's overall length, being up to 6 feet long and 1.5 feet wide. Each side of the rostrum is lined with 14 to 24 equally separated serrated teeth. And breeding for this fish occurs both in fall and in spring, with females giving birth to between 2 and 13 live young in the salt or brackish waters near the river mouths. The pups then move upriver and spend the first 5 to 10 years of their life in rivers and lakes up to 250 miles inland before reaching sexual maturity at around 9 to 10 feet in length. Uh, after which they return to the sea. Occasionally, young individuals become isolated in freshwater ponds and lakes and may end up spending the rest of their lot up to 80-year-long lives there. As suggested by the alternative name, the common sawfish, it was once a plentiful species but has now declined drastically, leading it to be considered a critically endangered species by the IUCN. The large tooth sawfish is frequently hunted for its fins, distinctive saw, and highly prized oily liver. It is also sadly frequently caught by fishermen who don't even intend to try and catch one uh, because its distinctive saw is prone to getting entangled in the fishing nets. Despite the large tooth sawfish's massive historical range, stable populations of these now critically endangered cartilaginous fish remain just in 20 countries worldwide. Next up is rotifers. Commonly also called the wheeled animals or the wheel animalcules, they make up a phylum of microscopic and near-microscopic pseudocelematic animals called rotifera. They were first described by Reverend John Harris in 1696, and other forms were later described by Anton von Leeuwenhoek in 1703. 
found throughout both freshwater and marine ecosystems, most rotifers are around 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters long, although, they're lo although their size can range from just 50 micrometers to over 2 millimeters in length. The most distinctive feature of rotifers is their corona, a ciliated organ found on their head that, most, that the rotifers use as a conveyor belt to bring food to their mouths. Some rotifers are free-swimming and truly platonic, others move by inchworming along a substrate, and others are still sensile, living inside tubes and gelatinous holdfasts that are attached to the substrate. About 25 species of rotifers are colonial, while the rest are solitary. Rotifers are filter feeders, eating organic detritus, dead bacteria, algae, and protozoans. They play an especially important role in freshwater ecosystems, being a main component of plankton, uh, therefore a major food source while, for many species, while also contributing to the decomposition of soil and organic matter, while also cleaning the water around them. Under drought conditions, certain rotifers can contract to an inert form and lose almost all of their body water through a process known as anhydrobiosis. In this state, they do not eat, drink, or breathe, and they are resistant to damage caused by radiation. Some specimens have been known to go as long as nine years in stasis, and after being rehydrated, they resume activity within a few hours, essentially free from damage. Next up is the red kangaroo, which a lot of people complained wasn't in the Australian video. Well, here it is. It's also known as the giant kangaroo. It is a large marsupial common throughout mainland Australia. They are native to scrubland, grassland, and desert habitats, where they feed primarily on grasses and flowering shrubs. Kangaroos themselves are preyed upon by dingoes, eagles, and saltwater crocodiles, albeit rarely. Uh, standing at over 5 feet tall, measuring over 9 feet long, and weighing upwards of 100 pounds, uh, red kangaroos are not only the largest kangaroo species, but also the largest land animal in Australia and the largest marsupial currently on Earth. Females are smaller than males, with more blue-gray coloration, although in arid zones, females are colored more like the reddish-orange males. They typically have two forelimbs with small claws and two muscular hind limbs, which are used for jumping. They have a strong tail, which is often used to create a tripod when standing upright to give them more stability. Red kangaroo's legs work much like a rubber band, with the Achilles tendon stretching as the animal comes down and then releasing its energy to propel the animal upward and forward, enabling the characteristic bouncing locomotion. This allows the kangaroo to reach speeds up to 35 miles per hour, jump upwards of 10 feet in height, and cover nearly 30 feet in a single bound. They are sociable animals, typically found in groups between 4 and 8 individuals, often made up of several females, and they are and they're young with a dominant male, but some groups of up to 1,500 kangaroos have been recorded. Red kangaroo mates year-round and has one of the shortest pregnancies in the animal kingdom, with the baby emerging after only 33 days. Usually only one young is born at a time, although twins are not unheard of. The baby is born blind, hairless, and only a few centimeters in length. Its hind legs are mere stumps, and it instead uses its more developed forelimbs to climb its way through the thick fur on its mother's abdomen into the pouch. This takes about three to five minutes. Once in the pouch, it fastens onto the one of the two teats and starts to feed. After approximately 190 days, the baby, now called a joey, is sufficiently large and developed enough to make its full emergence out of the pouch, after sticking its head out for a few weeks until it eventually feels safe enough to fully emerge. From then on, it spends increasing time outside in the outside world, and eventually, after 235 days, it leaves the pouch for the last time. However, it will continue to suckle uh, until it reaches about 12 months of age. Kangaroos typically reach sexual maturity at 18 months, but often don't breed until well after two years of age. Red kangaroos can live up to 20 years, and the red kangaroo has also been observed to engage in alloparental care, a behavior in which the female may adopt another female's joey. This common parenting behavior is seen in many other animal species, such as penguins, wolves, elephants, and even flathead winnows. Our reptile of the week is the alligator snapping turtle. Also known as a loggerhead snapper, it is a species of turtle in the family Clyridaea, uh, reaching lengths of upward to 3 feet and weights in excess of 250 pounds. The alligator snapping turtle is the largest turtle in North America and one of the largest freshwater turtles on Earth, with only the Asian giant soft-style turtles being able to reach larger sizes. 
Alligator snapping turtle is native to rivers, lakes, and ponds throughout the United States, uh, throughout Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Iowa, Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, Illinois, Arkansas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky. Uh, they have also become an invasive species throughout Germany, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and South Africa. The alligator snapping turtle can immediately be distinguished from the common snapping turtle by their three distinctive rows of spikes and the raised plates around, along its carapace. It has a large, heavy head, which is so big in comparison to the rest of its body, that unlike other turtles, it cannot withdraw its head into its shell as a defense mechanism, and thus, when threatened, alligator snapping turtles are extremely aggressive, especially on land. The alligator snapping turtle is an opportunistic feeder, known to prey on a variety of animals such as mollusks, worms, crustaceans, amphibians, snakes, lizards, aquatic plants, other turtles, water birds, squirrels, mice, nutrias, muskrats, raccoons, opossums, armadillos, and even small alligators. Although its prey of choice is typically fish, which it catches by sitting quietly on the bottom of murky water and letting its jaws hang open to reveal its tongue-like appendage, uh, which looks like a small pink worm at the back of its lar large, light gray mouth. Uh, it uses then it u then uses this to lure prey into striking distance before snapping its powerful jaws shut, often slicing its prey in half during the process. Alligator snapping turtles mate once a year in the spring, with females emerging from the water around, around two months to lay in order to build a nest roughly 50 yards from shore before laying a clutch of 10 to 50 eggs. After about 100 days of incubation, the young hatch out in late summer to early fall, uh, and these turtles will reach sexual maturity at 12 years of age and lose upwards of 200 years. Next up is the helmeted guinea fowl, also known as the pintade, the pearl hen, the glenny, or the Lebanon fowl, is one of six members of the guinea fowl family in the bird family, Numidae. Uh, it is two feet long, three pounds, and is native to scrubland south savannas and open woodlands throughout sub-Saharan Africa, living in communal flocks of, of around roughly 25 individuals. The helmeted guinea is an omnivorous bird that eats a variety of foods such as tubers, grains, seeds, nuts, and invertebrates, with their favorite food being ticks. These birds are terrestrial and prone to run rather than fly, when alarmed because this is their body, because their bodies are more well suited for running, and they are remarkably successful at maintaining dynamic stability over rough terrain at high speed. Like most gallinaceous birds, they have a short-lived explosive flight and rely on gliding to cover extended distances. The helmeted guinea fowl was domesticated in Africa sometime before the 4th century BCE, and it became common throughout Mediterranean and Middle Eastern markets in the 5th century. They can now be found throughout Europe, Australia, Asia, North America, and the Caribbean, where they are raised for their eggs, meat, and as both pest control for creatures like ticks and insects, as well as an alarm system for predators such as cats, foxes, and birds of prey. Can simply lay between six and twelve eggs and have a habit of hiding their deep tampering nests and then sharing with other hens until large numbers of eggs have accumulated, after which females will take turns incubating the eggs for 26 to 28 days. The chicks then hatch and are called keats, and they are de completely dependent on their mothers for the first six weeks of their life and can live up to 15 years under ideal conditions. And then, because I believe it is Ammonite Week, our extinct animal of the week is going to be one of the nautiloids. In particular, Camaroceras, also known as, which stand, I believe the scientific name stands for chambered horn, it is an extinct genus of giant orthoconic cephalopod that first appeared in the Ordovician period some 470 million years ago. It was a large mollusk that belonged to the nautiloids, a group containing the fully shelled cephalopods such as the modern nautilus. Camaroceras had several tentacles, which, unlike the tentacles of modern cephalopods like cuttlefish or squid, didn't range in size, uh, but were generally all of similar length. They also lacked suck they also lacked suction cups, like octopuses currently have today. Uh, in the center of its face was a large, sharp, parrot-like beak that was used to crush through carapaces of creatures such as arthropods like trilobites and the giant sea scorpion Megaloraptus. At the bottom of the animal is a tube-like device called a hyponome, which was used to propel the animal throughout the water like a jet. Uh, also known as the giant orthocone, Camaroceras sported up to 20-foot-long 
cone-shaped shell that was largely hollow with the mollusk only occupying the front end. The rest of the shell consisted of gas-filled chambers that could be fluid and emptied with water. Uh, in this matter, Camarocerus adjusted its buoyancy and weight as it rose and sank in the water column. As the apex predators of their time, Camarocerus were almost certainly stalkers and ambush predators that hunted by moving across the seafloor like a stingray or lying in wait for prey to swim by. They were most certainly not pursuit predators, as their large, rigid shells would have made maneuvering difficult. Camarocerus was a fairly common creature that inhabited the shallow seas of what is now North America and Eurasia for nearly 40 million years. However, however its population became severely reduced following the Ordovician Cerulean extinction events, and the last remnant of this genus went extinct sometime during the Windlock period of the Cerulean roughly 430 million years ago. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and non-binary pals.